What are the chances of a pandemic? If we look back over the last 1000 years, there are 21 diseases that could be considered global. Now, if we do the very simplified math on this, we would get around a 2% chance of a pandemic hitting in that time period. Now, why am I even telling you that? Well, first, because I think it's interesting. And second, because that means your chances of getting into BBE, and I assume you want to get into BBE since you clicked on this video, are around five times higher, which is 10%. Your chances are five times higher than a pandemic hitting. And we all know that a pandemic hits anyways. Also, I'm sure you're not gonna leave this one up to chance. You're well prepared and should have no worries about getting into the program. But worry you still do, and I get that. One year ago, I was in your shoes looking at YouTube for easing my stress, and that's what I'm hoping this video will do for you, which is the second video in my series about how I got into BB at VU. If you haven't watched my first video, you can watch it right here, where I talk about my experience in the program after almost two semesters of studying to really see if BBE is the right program for you. In this video, I shall demystify the BBE entrance exam by talking about my experience. Since I don't want to waste your time, I divided this video into sections so you can jump to the part you care about. Now, let's get into the video. The story starts with me deciding to actually go to VU. VU was the only option I had, which I guess is okay since I am an entrepreneur and I take risks for a living. Uh, yeah, maybe it wasn't the best idea. So yeah, I decided to go for VU, but to be even accepted to the entrance exam, you have to answer three questions beforehand, which are pretty straightforward. But yeah, I probably spent a good 12 hours on these questions, not all at once, but over several weeks. And in retrospect, it was very unnecessary to do that because many people just wrote a few sentences and got in anyways. I think they mainly use it as a type of spam filter to weed out the people that don't even bother answering the questions. So my advice to you is to not overthink them. Just try to come up with answers in an hour and use your remaining 11 hours to apply to other unis. Or if you are an entrepreneur like me, use 12 hours to come up with 600 words. Now, at the time, I was also studying for the Austrian A-levels called Natura, and it was a very weird time, and I'm sure you can relate. I wasn't at school anymore. I was just at home, supposed to study all day. It was this weird state of limbo where I worked towards this goal, and I didn't really know what to do afterwards. Like, I had the plan with uni, but it was still kind of a very, far away abstract type of goal I didn't understand. It was a very confusing time. Anyways, Matura turned out fine and with that I was done with one of the longest chapters in my life. And that didn't mean that I could stop studying and just relax. No, 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 quite the opposite actually. That was when I started to study for the entrance exam, which was roughly four weeks away at the time. I studied based on the very limited information available to me. It said that the exam consisted of a business and mathematics part. Because I did my matura at a business school, I already was quite familiar with the business part, which was mainly about supply and demand, marketing, and an introduction into accounting. The math part was what was challenging to me, because we didn't have math in English at school, we had it in German. So I had to learn all this complicated mathematical vocabulary, and on top of that, complicated mathematical notation, which we didn't use that much in school. But you have to keep in mind that that's not just important for the entrance exam, but also for your studies later on. Well, for the maths part, I started studying the examples of past maturas that are translated into English, since in my case, they were very similar or, I mean, they were the same as the ones we got at the exam, just with changed numbers. Next, you should take a look at the mathematics book they recommend. And please don't buy the book, it's quite expensive and you can find it with a bit of Googling. This book should bring you up to speed with the heavy mathematical notation they use at the test and also the English vocabulary. In my school, we did a lot of the derivation and statistics on our laptop. And the thing is that you're not allowed to use that for the entrance exam. You're just allowed to use a simple calculator. And I can't stress this enough. Please check if your calculator is accepted at the entrance exam. And you can look that up online at the VU website. If you went to school like me and already forgot most of the calculus, I suggest you familiarize yourself with it again because 
That is one of the main parts of the exam. The book they provide is actually a great learning resource for that. And if you don't get the stuff in the book, there always is Khan Academy to save the day. As mentioned, I already knew a lot of the business stuff, but I still made a very comprehensive mind map of the booklet we got in OneNote. And I actually linked it in the description for everyone that had an attention span long enough to make it to this part in the video. I suggest you go over it every day and by the exam you will have probably not just understood everything but probably also learned it by heart. So next, how much did I study? Well, because I started so early, I actually had enough time to study for both parts of the exam extensively. Maybe I went a bit overkill, but I studied around 4 hours each day, some days more, some days less, uh, for a period of 4 weeks. After that I went to Vienna for the entrance exam, and the first challenge was actually finding it. At first I thought it was on campus, but no, not at all. All the entrance exams of the major public Viennese universities are held in the Viennese Trade Fair Center, which luckily was very close by to the university. Of course at this point anticipation was already killing me, and once we finally found the entrance, we walked through a hallway that was as long as you would have it in an airport, which certainly didn't help with the stress. Next we queued in another huge hall, and some people were trying to make conversation, but I was just way too agitated to talk to anyone, so I just kind of sat there. After that we were allowed to go into the examination hall and were assigned to our desks. And while sitting there I noticed that the stage they had in the middle, where the vice rector and the other professors sat, looked a bit like the, the bridges, you know, like the command centers they had in the Star Wars uh, Star Destroyers. I think that was just my mind trying to <laughs> kind of soothe my soothe my stress away. Anyways, after that the exam started and now to the part all of you probably have been waiting for, the content. We started with the business part, which consisted of theory questions, which were also meant to test your level of English. Next, I'd suggest you take a closer look at the mechanics of supply and demand, since that is one of the key questions at the exam. You should be able to answer questions like if production costs rise, in what direction does the supply curve shift? Of course this is just an example, but these are the type of questions you can expect for this part. You should also take a closer look at financial ratios and the mechanics of the balance sheet, since there are also going to be questions about that. Now that's everything I had to say about the business part, but after the first part, so the business part, which I actually managed to do quite well, uh, there is a short break. And in that break, I actually wasn't socially incapable and talked to some people. And you should do that too, since everyone is in a new environment and just kind of looking for friends. I talked to this very nice girl who actually made it into the program with me. And another guy. And I can say this now because I know for a fact he didn't make it into the program. I kid you not, told me that he made a counterfeit English certificate to get into the program or to be able to apply to the program. Anyways, I digress, but that was just a story too crazy to not share. Uh, let's move on to the next part. The maths part, which was pretty challenging for me. It consisted of a lot of, as mentioned before, derivation, probability, and statistics. For me personally, probability, probably, uh, was the most challenging because they just used formulas I've not seen before. If you also suck at probability, I suggest you take a closer look at Khan Academy for that one. Next, you should be really good and by now hopefully also fast at deriving complex functions with logarithms, fractions and the exponential function e. Again, Khan Academy is a good resource for that one. And I feel really dumb always saying complex derivation because now we use it all the time, but back then it was very challenging to me and if it's not for you, then uh, I guess you have a little bit of an advantage and can be happy about that. By finishing the maths part, I was also done with the exam. And with that, a thing I've been studying for, for almost four weeks. And I walked out of the exam hall with my backpack and two bags of clothes. And with that, just kind of moved to Vienna. But that's another story. Now, fast forward a month when the results were released. By then, as I said, I already kind of was living in Vienna and I was pretty sure I didn't get in because I did struggle at the math part quite a bit. So I got an email that the results were released and funny story, I actually met this person in Vienna who I already had on Snapchat by then and we both posted to a story that we were 
surprise surprise <laughs> accepted that's why i'm making this video so yeah we both posted in our story that we were accepted and it was just this very random moment where we were like oh wow we go to the same university now and yeah so i was ecstatic because i didn't have a plan b as mentioned so that was just an amazing moment of euphoria now wrapping up please don't stress as much as i did stress enough so you know you will study enough to be accepted I know it can be quite intimidating to see that there are 1,499 other people applying to the program you are applying to, but for many it is just a second option and they're not as well prepared as you may be. Also, almost everyone who answered the questions you need to answer to be accepted to the entrance exam was invited, so your competition may be a person applying to nine other unis or just someone with decent English who had 50 euros to spare on the application fee. My final words of advice would be to study the mathematics book they provide, to be familiar with derivation and to look at my summary of the business booklet. Now I hope I could demystify the entrance exam for you quite a bit. I tried to be as thorough as possible, which might have been boring at times, but I think it was very important to give a holistic account of my experience. By the way, if you're wasting your time and have issues studying, I suggest you watch my video, Waste of Time, to not waste your time. And with that, I shall see you in the next video, in which I will talk about this year's online entrance exam at Leo.